Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, <coughs> a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Now these eight verses here are 28 items. The exact revolution of the moon in one moon, month. Time. When God made the, the, the big lights, the little lights, and the moon, he said there would be times for seasons. You run back to Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> so Solomon is looking at an earthly life with times and seasons. Now it's particularly weird that I must say this also. The song you may have heard growing up, Turn, 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 by Pete Singer, Sanger, in 1962, the record album Bitter, and I got Bitter and can't tell what SWAT, I'll have to check that reference there. Alright, King James 1611. Verses 1 through 8 verses that are in this song. I was sitting one day, I, <clears throat> I was working with the company I was working for, filling the company gas. I'm making the gas station, I'm hearing over the overhead music, like, you know, wherever you go. And I heard the King James Bible being read to me. And it's remarkable that Satan knows the word. Because I don't know if if Mr. Uh, Pete would open his Bible at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and say, hey, I'll make a song out of this. <clears throat> now, maybe he has some story. And so here I am, 2014. I'm, I'm over 40 years old. Back then, I was, I was young. And I got music piped through me at the store I work in. And I'm listening to the words. I'm not listening to the music. I'm not listening to the guitars and the drums. Thank God I can, I can put that out. And my friend Christian, if you have to work in that atmosphere as I do, and grew up with some of that music, listen to the words. For Satan is the musician, Ezekiel 28, the song leader of heaven that fell, Isaiah 7, I think it is, or 14, maybe 7, 14. And when you hear the words of the worldly songs, <clears throat> and you hear the Bible being quoted to you, there is no master. The fact is that Satan does know the words, so why would he have to do put the modern versions out there because he knows the word and it's so funny that this song turn 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 why do you have to have three turns there's no turn in the verse God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit God the unholy father the, the, uh, the false prophet and the, and the unholy spirit 
that he doesn't quote from a martyred Bible, he quotes from a King James. Isn't that interesting? Listen to the words of the music on the radio if you have to listen. I mean, if you don't have to listen, don't go. And you will have the Bible being brought to you. Now, Solomon gives us the entire meaning of life in eight verses. A life of the word that's particularly not wanting, one is patience. And I'm going to tell you in Genesis 1, and let me see if I can find it real quick without, Genesis 1, I'm going to tell you something that maybe you did not know. And let me find it real quick. Uh, Genesis 1, verse 14. God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years. <clears throat> Genesis 1, 14 starts the clock. Genesis, before 1, 13, there's no clock. It's eternity. There's no ticking of time in eternity. The clock begins Genesis 1.14. Let's see if I can find this one real quick. Revelation chapter... Let me find this real quick. I read it today. Wait. Revelation 10 verse 6. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven... And the things therein are, Genesis 1, the earth and the things that there are therein are, Genesis 1, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. The element of time was starting in Genesis 1, I forgot what verse it was, 14. Before the great white throne judgment. Let me safely say, the great white throne judgment, there will be no more time. Time ends before the great white throne judgment. There will be no wristwatch, no sundials, no clocks in eternity. So when we sing that lovely, beautiful song, and it is, when we've been there for 10,000 years, that is wrong. We will be in an element of no time. We'll be in a period of absolute no patience because we, there's no time. But as we sit here today, unto that period, we have a thing called time. 28. To everything, there is a season. So you can take everything and put it into the four seasons. Now you can't go to the beach in the winter. There are certain crops you can't plant in the fall. You don't need a snow shovel in the summer. You plant seeds in the spring. Everything has a season that properly belongs in the four seasons that has God has given. And some things, if you were to do out of season, it would be a freak or it wouldn't work at all. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. You must know, and when it comes to the key of your prayers, you must know that God is absolutely patient. Even though we may not be. God is in no hurry to answer our prayer. 
And yet he is not lacking to answer our prayer. He will answer the prayer on his time frame. A time to be born positive. For a human being, approximately nine months. Myself, I was born seven months. I was a premature baby. And spent that two months and more, I believe, in an incubator at the hospital. Until I was grown and ready. And even today, there are certain parts of my body, like my throat, is smaller than normal. Because I was born too early. Everything in the womb was not developed like it should have been developed when I was born. But a child who goes through a natural, the process of the full time, there is a time for a human nine months. And each of those months, and you can get a baby book, and you can check off as you go this week, this week, this week, oh, I don't know how many weeks there are. And you can see that the fetus grows a fingernail, grows, his heartbeat gets stronger than it can be monitored. He can smile at this age. He grows ears at this age. He is moving around. You can, right around this time, if you feel, he will start kicking. And you can follow that with a baby book. Do you know that baby book and that pregnancy that's going on defies evolution? That shows you the God, the Creator, by, by chapter 3. And a time to die. Now, is that negative? Being born, is that, <coughs> is that positive? Every soul that is born of a woman needs to be born again. When a woman conceives seed, she has populated heaven or hell. hard to say if that's good or not bad. For many shall walk in the broad ways, and few that find the straight gate. Many pregnancies will go off into hell. Few will go into the straight gate. Fewer of the few will do that which is right. How many Christians are out there, and how many of them are doing right? Death. Die. I believe God has a pointed time for you to die. Is that bad or good? If you're a saved, born again Christian, you're doing what you're supposed to, that is not bad at all. That is glory. To be absent from the body, be present with the Lord, Paul said. Paul says, My time is coming. Uh, my time of departure is coming. I, listen, I'm going to get a crown. He's happy. He gets stoned in the city because of the word of God. He gets back up and heads right back. At, you know why he wanted? He wanted to go home to heaven. But a man that, that has no hope, who is without God, give me the drugs, give me the paddles, because I'm going to hell. I don't want to go there. A worldly Christian, give me, give me more world. Wait a little longer, Jesus. Because I know you'll be angry with me when I get to see you. So let me get all the pleasure I can now. Being born in death, that, that's, that's neutral. That's based upon your condition after you die. It can be a lo lovely, wonderful thing. Or it can be... I also believe... And I'm working on the scriptures as I read through the Bible. <clears throat> I believe you can die before God wants you to die. I believe you can do things to your body. You can sin. You can be even a martyr for Jesus Christ. And die before your time. 
Now, I am not saying su suicide's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. But I don't think God would have a person end their life by suicide. I understand there are very hard conditions. I'm not going to touch that subject. A time to a time to plant. That, that sounds good. Nothing wrong with that. A time to pluck up that which is planted. It, it, the harvest is over. You've gotten everything you've gotten out of that plant, and now here comes fall, here comes winter. Take it out of the ground. Chop it up. Put it in a compost pile. Let it be used for the next crop. But from the time of planting until that time is plugged up, there is much work to be done. And that's the hardest work. The breaking up the ground, the sowing, the weeding. You know, there's a lot in that period, in that comma, after plant and a time to plug up. But this doesn't put the plant in the ground, okay, now it's time to rip it up. You got almost a whole year long in that comma. And you must realize with commas and periods and semicolons and colons in your Bible, it may be a whole year. It may be seven years. It may be the church age. One comma. And we got practically a whole year. Depending on what you planted. Um, I wonder what the modern Bible say. A time to kill. Don't we go down on the way home from church? We see a billboard. Thou shalt not kill. What did Solomon just say? Who is under the law and knows what the law says? He just quoted from Genesis 1, so I would assume he knows what the law is. He says there's a time to kill. Romans 13 says the government has the right to kill as an agency. That's to those who have broken and broken the law and sin. Because the Bible in the Old Testament and all Testaments, if you kill somebody, you are to be killed too. God gives the government that power. And yet those people that show up you know, all the time are usually when they're going to put a prisoner to death for his crime. Excuse me, what did that guy do to be put on death row? A time to kill. All right, let's. You're on a battlefield somewhere, and your fellow soldier, he has just been shot up, blown away by uh, any kind of bomb thing that has been thrown. He is still living, just barely, but in much pain. You've got to leave the area. The enemy's coming, and then for mercy and grace. Appeals, uh, appeals to you to kill him. What do you do? You got King Saul as a example. He asked his, his armor bearer. His armor bearer didn't do it. What if he was a saved man? You knew it. Now, see, you can't just jump in a Bible. Oh, time to kill. Nah, 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 nah. Now, see, it takes a lot of prayer. What would you do? You better seek God. All right, another illustration. You come home, and your family dog has bubbles and foam all around his mouth, and he hasn't had a bubble bath. What do you do? 
you get the shotgun or the 45, whatever you have, and you blow it right between his, his, his eyes. What are you going to do? Keep the mad dog around and alive? All right, here's another question. As far as life and death and our hope, your dog is seriously medically deficient and in great pain and all that. You going to pay the $45,000 for the transport? Or are you just going to just put the dog out of his misery that has no hope and, and, uh, and has no soul? Now just go back to the dirt. You got mice running around your house. Time to kill. What are you going to do? Keep them alive. Thou shalt not kill. You know, America has not killed religion. I didn't say people. America has not killed religion. Look where we are with religion today. Check your phone book on the churches, the yellow pages. A time to heal. That's positive. Don't need to speak much on that one. You cut yourself. It's going to take time to heal. And between a time and kill and a time to heal, you better pray to God what he, what, what he wants. I'm trying to think of the king's name. Um, I can't think. The prophet Isaiah came in the room and said, set thy house in order. You're going to die. He prayed to the Lord. The Lord sent the prophet back and said, okay, I'm going to give you a little more time. And that little more time that God gave him, he produced the longest, wickedest king in Judah. It had been better for him to die, I would assume. And you know what happened after he survived? Babylon came in and took a complete shopping list of what was in, in Jerusalem so when King Nebuchadnezzar would come in later to take everything. That would have been a lot better for that king to die when the Lord told him to die. A time to break down. And that's not a physical breakdown of the body. Because it says, and a time to build up. <coughs> Jeremiah 45.4 you know, when somebody receives Christ as their Savior, break down the wall. Invite them in. To those that reject Christ and God's offering, build up the wall. Don't let them in. You got to build walls in your life. You got to say, this is mine and that is yours. This is my side and that is your side. And you gotta set standards. If you want to be on this side, these are the conditions. A time to weep. So crying is okay. Romans twelve fifteen. Daniel wept. Jesus wept. Paul wept. John in the book of Revelation wept. And they find medically that tears and all that are very beneficial to the body. It's an exit for a lot of the junk that's in your body. It is God's windshield wiper for your eyeballs. A time to laugh, Luke 10.21. Nothing wrong with laughing. But is it in the right time? Some people laugh when they don't even know what they're laughing at. It's not the time. And you're laughing when someone else is laughing when it's not time for you to laugh. Maybe an insult. 
See, you got to realize that. <coughs> Excuse me. All laughing is not a funny laugh. And you, so far in, in three chapters of this book, sometimes the proper time is weeping over laughing. You'll have more times of weeping than you will of laughter. A time to mourn. Oh, many of that. All kinds of mourning. And a time to dance. Oh, see that? The Bible says I can dance. Yeah, but there are... I have no business dancing with someone, someone other than my wife. One guy in prison asked me, he goes, you know, I'm with my wife and I, can I listen to the music on the, on the radio? I'm like, well, you got to be careful, first of all, I mean, is she your woman? Are you married? And why do you need that extra stimulant? See, the dance today, with the layers of clothes lacking, and the contact of the body in sweat, I would assume that these diseases are uh, Ebola and all that. I don't think you really want to get up close dancing. Where you trade, you're so close and so... Practically undressing, you're, you're training each other's saliva and, and sweat. Now, if they need to find your DNA, if they can wipe it off another person's body that is not your spouse, I think there's a problem. Why do you want to dance? That's the question. And can you ask that question before God? Honestly. Ask God. God, do you appreciate me dancing with that other person that is not my spouse? And that form of dance. Do you really appreciate it? You won't ask God that. Because you already know the answer. Because you're already fighting. Because you want a man to give you an approval. You won't go to God. Now, when you got your arms wrapped around your, your spouse, and you're a little bit swaying, okay. Either you're old and your body is, is conversing, or it's just you're in each other's arms and each other's brace. You don't have to do the boogie-woogie. I mean, if I did the boogie-woogie with my wife, I'd be a broken hooky. I'd need a cast and then 911. Any dance at my age is break dancing. Now, I'm talking about bones. It'll be time to be. It'll be time to break down. It'll be time for building up the bones. <clears throat> a time to cast away stone, and a time to gather stones together. Ask David what that one means. He's got his, <coughs> his, his shepherd's sling. You think it'd be time to throw the, the stones out of his bag? You think after he clobbered Goliath with that stone, it would have been proper for him to get rid of the other four stones? When Goliath had four brothers? I think it's so funny because my family always had gardens. And it was so amusing with my dad, he'd go in the garden. In New England, we grew rocks. My father would go out there and grow the rocks, pick them up, and throw them. And we had, a, we had a Labrador dog named Demon. That dog will get the rocks and put them back. For every three rocks that you throw in a garden, two would come back. That's not the time for to be gathering stones and putting them back. We're trying to get rid of them. And the dog would bring them back. And 
Now see, there's a time to gather stones that you want to build a wall. You want to use them as artillery against the enemy. That's the time for gathering stone. But if you want the garden, you got to throw the stones out. <clears throat> a time to embrace. And a time to refrain from embracing. And there's all kinds of avenues with that one. If your spouse has poison ivy, don't give them a big hug. And there's a time when, when, the, when your child is there and the bike is on the ground and, and they're seated on the ground, they got their knee you know, up and they're, they're petting their knee, and there's a time to go up and embrace the child with, you know, because pain and they had a little accident. For me, I don't appreciate, and there was a, there was a family time where and one, she hugged everybody. I don't appreciate that. Now, I don't hug my children. That may be a sin. But I hug my wife. I have no business putting my arms around anybody else's wife. You have no business putting your arms around me who I am someone's husband. That's what I believe. Now, some people, believe, I mean that, that's not a die-hard thing. There's a time for embracing and there's a time to, it's not time to embrace. Sometimes in the midst of your fights, be ye angry and sin not, let, the, let not the wrath go upon the sun. That verse there. Sometimes as a husband and wife, you just need to come together, put your arms around each other and say, okay, let's just call it quits. Let's end whatever battle we're doing. Let's love, make up, and forget it. I didn't say give up the marriage. I said, let's give up this battle. Let's embrace, go to bed. <coughs> By the way, which is also a song that I hear over the overhead. It's amazing how one of the worldly songs are out there and the one that's you practice. There ought to be no doghouse or couch in a marriage unless you're sick. I believe in a sick bed. I don't believe in a doghouse and, and the couch. I believe it's a sin. And I'm happy to say with the years I've been married, there's never been the couch and there's never been the doghouse. Now there's been a sick bed. There's been a hospital bed. A time to get. And a time to lose. You better make sure it's the time that God wants you to get. It's not the time of the credit card. Black Friday! Yay! Charge it! Because you'll be getting a bill in the mail. Ooh. And you'll be, you'll be wishing it was the time to lose. They said that this Christmas season, December 26th, was an extraordinary, extreme day. And everyone came out to exchange their gifts. You mean you spent all this money on Black Friday for the people to go on December 26th to exchange what you put on credit that you not going to be able to afford? Really? There is a time to lose, and it may be sad. And whatever to get, whatever to look, it could be life, it could be a material thing. A time to keep. And a time to cast away, Proverbs 11, 24, verse 25. I'll tell you what, it's not a time to keep. When I grew up, 
losers, weepers, some keep losers, weepers, something. You know, when you found something because it was because you found it, it was yours. That's a violation of the law of the Bible. You ought to go find who owns it. I don't know if they. I say that because I don't know if they still practice that today. You know, I find a ten dollar bill at the ATM. They can find out who that ten dollars belongs to. You know, if you really go try. Now the fifty cents is in the in the telephone. That may be a little harder, but put a little effort. And time to cast away. <coughs> Sometimes you gotta say goodbye to some things. You've got to get rid of. Your sins are time to get rid of. Give goodbye. And you know how you get over those sins? You get things. You won't get over the liquor. You get into Christ and get witnessing. Say, Lord, I want to fill this this liquor void. I want to go witness. I want to fill that void. Lord, I want to give up this smoking, and I want to put Bible reading. Lord, I don't want to go to this place anymore. I'm going to put going to church. So you've got to get rid of the negative and fill it with a positive. You can't just get rid of the negative and the boom. There's a hole. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend. And you find that in the Old Testament, they would rend their clothes in sorrow, upset, repentance. And a time to sow. Now, I've displayed rend and sow even more. I don't know besides that. When it would be proper for you to take a piece of cloth and rend it? I don't. Maybe if you're making bandages, emergency bandage or something. I don't. And a time to sew. I guess if mom's making, uh, doing the dishes, not time to bring your, your clothes to be sewed. I don't know. That's, I do. <clears throat> a time to keep silence. A time to keep silence. That's a personal thing. You know, in the book of Revelation, says that there was a period in, in, in heaven that there was a half hour of silence. I know in that silence, I, I know one person said, What? You're re echo through heaven. What? Personal. Time to keep silence and the dog speak. So here we go. There's a time you just, you know what? You don't have to say nothing. Let it go. You know, sometimes your facial expressions just will say enough. Read what James says about the tongue. And a time to speak. That time of silence and that time of speak, man, that, that takes prayer. Because James says about the tongue, you can't tame it. And you don't understand. <clears throat> there may be a time in somebody's life <clears throat> that God doesn't want you to say nothing and you want to say something. And there may be a time in someone else's life that God wants you to say something and you don't want to say nothing. You can never cross that to get what's right. A time to love. Well, I want that next part in any modern Bible. And a time to hate. The Bible says you're to hate sin. God hates sin. And we read a list in Proverbs, seven things. The seventh abomination. Him that soweth discord among the brethren. Do you hate somebody that, that causes problems in the church? Now, you don't have to act on that hate. And you know what? With that hate, you may have to practice the time to keep silent.
Uh oh, a time of war. And a time of peace. And that is up to the leaders of the nation. Prayerfully reaching out to God. Jesus said, you know, if a, if a king were to sit down and figure out how many <clears throat> of his soldiers he needs to fight the fell or to send out an ambassador. And with these things we see, these 28 things, there's a beginning and there's an ending. There's a positive and there's a negative. There is something that the world wouldn't expect to find in the Bible. And that there is something that they would, God is love. Well, God's also a God of hate. Well, God loves the sinner but hates the sin. No! See, you've taken the words and you have misapplied them to a God that you like and not to a holy God. And when you get these 28 things down properly in your life, you will have a good walk with God. Have you taken account in your Christian walk these 28 things? Your personal walk. Birth. Have you talked to God and prayed to God about having, a, having children? And when to have them? You talk to God about a garden. Something as simple as a garden. Maybe God will know what, what the what the 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 bugs or the, the insects will love this year that he don't want you to plant. Do you know in the things of Egypt at one point in time that there was one crop that was eaten totally by the locusts and yet Another crop wasn't destroyed. It had not come out of the ground yet, and it was destroyed later. But they didn't repent and get right. Have you asked God what to hate in your life? Have you asked God what to gather? Have you asked God what to get rid of? Have you asked God as a Christian what I need to get rid of in my life? That's the question. What do you embrace? And what do you got to let go? There are people and things in a Christian walk that you need to say bye. Abraham told his family bye. Jacob told his father in law bye. Ruth told the world and, and all her gods, bye. Paul told everyone in the world, bye. You know what you know what Paul told Demas? Bye. You know what he did to Luke? Embraced him for staying. Of all the things, will you bring me the parchments and the books? Don't bring the movie tickets. Don't bring me the worldly junk. I'm going to die. It's that time. Oh, Lord, please keep me alive. No, then what? Lord, your time. You match the 28 things here found in Paul's life, and look what a blessing the 2014 we have because of his writings. Because Paul got things of the time of his life, you heard of that, 
He got it right. And even still, he could write that which I want to do, and I, I'm this is not proper quote. That which I want to do, I don't. That which I do want to do, I, I don't. That which I don't want to do, I do. He had a fight with the flesh, too. He had to war with these things. There were things in his life that I got to get rid of with that. I got to get away from that. I got to put that away. We are in a period of time. We are given 60 seconds for every minute. And what you need to realize, save the loss, you will give an account for each one of those 60 seconds. Never mind a day, never mind a month, never mind a week, never mind a year. Every second you will give an account. And you know what? When it comes a time to be and a time to and a time and a time and a time and a time, you say that 28 times. There are seconds I will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and they will be burned. I guarantee it. Probably far more seconds burnt than that which will be gold, silver, or precious stone. So I have not mastered a time, a time, a time, 28 times. I need to work on that. Before I say I'm in imperfection, A time, a time, a time. And Satan thought it was so important that he had his own people sing. Turn, <coughs> turn, turn. And I believe, I don't have it written here, but I believe that the group was called the Eagles. If I'm correct on that one, I'm not sure. That one, I believe it was the eagle. Isn't that one of the cherubim? Wasn't a man another one of the cherubim? Isn't that interesting? You still got the lion and the ox. You already got the serpent. The lion and the ox. I wonder if that's in there somewhere in those lyrics when you, if you were to study. I can say I'm in perfection. I am without sin. When I can fulfill these 28 things. And I'm not. I waste time. All the seconds of my life have not been to the glory of God or to any glory but the flesh. The great study that we just had here. From birth to death, we have something called life. And the day I was born, 10.51 a.m., the seconds began. And the seconds are running today. 46 years later. They're still running. And I have no idea when the seconds will stop. I don't know. You may have to ask my wife. You may have to ask my children. Or my pa somebody is going to outlive me. And then you can figure how many seconds I've lived. And you take that number of seconds, I will give an account to God. As will you. I'm not talking days. I'm not talking weeks. I'm not talking months. I'm not talking years. I'm talking the seconds. 
right now, this moment, this new moment, this new second. What time was it? Was it a time for my family? Was it a time for my wife? Was it a time for God? Was it a time for reading the Bible? <coughs> was it a time for work? Was it a time for witnessing? Was, was it a time to go to church? Is it a time to check the oil? Is it, listen, all these things. I can't blame God if my car breaks down because I didn't take time to go check the oil. See, time brings responsibility. And if you can't take care of what God has given you, well, he said, well, how are you going to take care of another man? Everything we do is in the formation of time. One day there will be no more time. 